Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Club podcast. Today, I am really excited to be sharing some of my favorite tips and lessons from being a side hustler for the first three years of my business. And, you know, when I look back at those first three years, I have a lot of fond memories, but I'll be honest, it wasn't pretty like 80% of the time. There were some really rough days, really rough months, but it was really just, it was so worth it overall. So that's why I'm so excited to be sharing my favorite tips and takeaways from my Sassler days. And I also want to be including some more practical Mm, kind of like action items or just something more practical that you can actually consider implementing in your own business as well. So this is what the episode is going to look like for today. But before we dive in for today, I want to share something that's also very exciting and it's going to be coming to our clients next month in October, 2022. So I'll be introducing a brand new live mini course for our private clients, and it's going to be called the podcast club. And this is going to be centered around helping our clients get their thought leadership out to more people, signing more clients, and ultimately doing less work, but still be able to put out long form and evergreen content regularly. So this is going to look like four uh, separate live workshops where I'll be breaking down my own long-form content strategy and how that's amplified my own business results, doing live coaching and Q&A. And clients can really ask me anything related to the podcast and marketing in the podcast as well. And really what was the inspiration for this new mini course is I was looking at some of my numbers in the podcast And I found that between March 2021 till February 2022, so that was kind of the period of time uh, before I decided to take some uh, massive steps back from the business for a while this year. So within that 12-year timeline, when I was very um, much more active, let's just say, um, we actually created around 110 K plus USD in sales while only, only, quote unquote, I should emphasize the only part, only a 10,712 total downloads on the podcast. And that's really interesting because that's not a very big number, right? Like in one year, around 10,000 total downloads across all episodes published. That's not a very large number, but here's the interesting thing. Almost all of our clients are actually regular listeners of the show. So it's very likely that the podcast did play a big role in their decision-making process when deciding to work with us. And we only, or we primarily sell one-to-one coaching or group coaching programs in my business. So all that to say, I may know a thing or two about how a podcast can or how to create a podcast that can create results for your own business. So uh, if the podcast club sounds fun and you want to join in on the fun as well, and also take your content marketing and business to the next level, I'm really excited to share that we do have one to one coaching spots available right now. And this is for those of you who want to build an online business uh, while being able to make time for the other parts of your life that matter most to you. So if you're keen to join us inside one one coaching, please head on over to sherylthery.com slash program and send in your application. And after that, we'll book a call to chat more about you and your business, how I can help you and to answer any questions that you might have. Again, for all of the details and to apply for one one coaching, please head on over to sherylthery.com slash program. All right. So For today's episode, I want to touch on three particular topics. So the first one is time management as a side hustler who is doing this on top of your full-time job or other life priorities. And I also want to offer a a practical planning tip. Uh, The second thing is becoming known for your unique thought leadership and to do this ASAP because spending time creeping on other entrepreneurs or trying to copy your favorite business coach is not going to help you. It's not going to help you create results or move any faster in your business. And also, I want to add on um, some more practical insights about how you can start honing in on your unique thought leadership. And third and finally, I want to talk about not lowering your standards or expectations of yourself as an entrepreneur just because you are a side hustler and you feel like you have less time compared to those who are supposedly full-time in their business. And then we'll finish off with a, it's like a super wholesome pep talk, but hey, if you've been following the show for a while, you'll know that our wholesome talks are usually kind of deep AF, right? Okay. So (laughs) all that to say, we have a lot to unpack for today. So let's dive right in. All right, tip number one, time management as a side hustler means being creative with the pockets of time that you do have and really turning up the impact of your actions rather than trying to make more time to do more manual labor. 
So I think that one thing that really helped me as a side hustler was that I very rarely, if not ever, felt like I didn't have enough time. And I think that's a distinction I have noticed Um, between myself and fellow side hustlers who really struggled with time in their business. So a lot of my peers who are also side hustlers, they often say that they don't, they feel like they don't have enough time. And that thought alone would just discourage them. Whereas for me, that wasn't even the question that really came up for me. And if it did, it wasn't to the extent where I allowed it to control my emotions. And I think this is important for me to share because, you know, I feel like we've all heard of the, um, uh, like, like the phrase, like mindset is important for entrepreneurship. Right. And, and this was one example of exactly that, right. Because even if someone else and I may have like the same amount of like free time in our schedule on a weekly basis, because maybe we, we both work like a similar schedule, full-time job, or we're both in grad school and we might have other like commitments, like family sleeping, you know, like whatever it is, like someone could look at their schedule or calendar and just feel like exasperated by how they don't have like a solid four hour time block on any given day of the week, right. Or on weekends. Whereas the way I look at my own calendar was I have so many pockets of time every single week, right? And that's why if you look at my old Instagram stories from 2019, 2020, and even 2021, you will see that like a lot of my stories were actually done on the go. And actually I should really do this. I should really pull out some of my old um, Instagram stories from my archives and just repost them like on my feed so you can see them. But basically like back when I was a side hustler, I would use any pocket of time available including things like walking from my house to the bus stop, right? To go to like the office to go to work. Or like, for example, like when I was brushing my teeth in the morning and getting ready for work, in my mind, I would be planning and what planning on what I wanted to say so that I can record it when I'm walking to the bus stop, right? And, or, or like another example is like, I might take a photo or boomerang while I'm walking somewhere. And then I would type the text on top of that boomerang and post it while I'm on the commute on the subway or something. Right. And another one is like, I maybe I, I will record a video Instagram stories at home first and then type in the captions on the go. Right. So, oh, also, 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 here's a fun one. I also remember very distinctively that there were many, many times when I would literally record content right outside my office, like the office building. And there were people walking in the background of my Instagram stories because like, where else would I do it, right? I, like I had that pocket of time, why not do it? But as you can see, I got really creative with where and when I did content and it didn't like intrude into my usual responsibilities. Like I was still able to very neatly compartmentalize the different parts of my life so that it didn't like seep into one another, right? So all that to say, there are always pockets of time that are available to you as well. But here's the thing, the execution of your action plan is probably what you're kind of resisting right now, right? Because in your mind, you're thinking that like your Instagram stories have to be done in a very nice setting inside your house or you're somewhere with a nice quiet background and your makeup and hair is done. You sound confident and you look bright on video, blah, 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 right? Like basically you feel like you need to have the most optimal environment and optimal state of being in order to put out your best work, right? Because, hey, like that's what all the other business coaches' Instagram stories look like, right? And it is those expectations alone, those expectations of what you think your content and or marketing is supposed to look like, like the expectation of how you're supposed to implement or do your your action plan. Those expectations are exactly what's holding back so many side hustlers. Like really, really, really think about that because it's not that you don't have time or you don't have time to create content or talk about your offer, like really be very careful about the stories that you're telling yourself, like, especially right now as a side hustler, and you might not be at a stage where you're, you know, really citing clients quote unquote consistently, right? Like right now your emotional capacity or like your, your identity as a entrepreneur, it might be more shaky than it could be. Right. So that's why I really need you to be very intentional with the thoughts you're thinking, with the stories or expectations you're feeding yourself, right? Because if anything, you got to be very creative with your thoughts, right? Because right now, any thought that kind of like discourages you is really going to make the whole entire process and experience a lot harder. 
And also another thing that comes up for Sasslers as well, in addition to the thought of I don't have enough time, another very common one that tends to come up concurrently is I need to do more. And for myself, that was something that I actually really struggled with, especially in my very early days as a side hustler. And I share this on many different episodes um, on the podcast previously, but in the first five months of my uh, journey of being a coach and entrepreneur, I was hustling on top of my full-time job. So for those first five-ish months, I also, um, not only did I work with one-to-one clients, but also posted on Instagram stories every day. I posted several times a week on my Instagram feed. I had a private Facebook group where I did weekly and monthly challenges and Facebook live streams. I sent out weekly email newsletters. I was in other people's Facebook groups. I um, I was posting on LinkedIn. I started a podcast and I even posted some YouTube videos here and there back in 2019. And that's a lot of work, especially for a side hustler. So as you may know from previous episodes um, where I did share about this, I burned out, right? To the point where I actually shut down my business for the next seven months until March, 2020. And it was only until March, 2020, seven months later, when I started to come back on the internet and started creating content. And it wasn't until actually quarter four of 2020 when I rebuilt my confidence to once again, sell a high ticket coaching program. So that's how shaky my belief and mindset was after the burnout. And I feel like for myself, it wasn't necessarily the the physical part of the burnout that shook me up, but it was more so my lack of belief that I didn't have to do so much in order to create results, right? Like I didn't believe that I could actually turn up the quality and the energy of my actions and thoughts. And instead, I really thought I had to like turn up the frequency and quantity of my manual labor to create results, right? I was really shaky in that particular belief, right? But here's the thing. As a side hustler, I understood that I really didn't have 24 hours in a day to work on my business. And if I really, really wanted to keep this going, I had to be number one, open to thinking differently. And also number two, open to operating and doing things differently. And that's why for most of 2020, after that seven month hiatus, I had to take some time to rebuild my belief and sense of identity and just overall belief in what I was doing and also start operating my business differently. And actually by the end of 2020, by the end of the year, we created two back-to-back 10K months and then a uh, six-figure year in 2021. So that might now lead to the question of how exactly did I do that even as a slide hustler, right? And I didn't technically increase the time, like the amount of time that I was allocating to my business, right? Because here's the thing, I focus on doing the same things, but I, instead of like doing more and more things or like doing different things, I focus on doing the the same thing better and also turning up the energy and impact of each of those things, right? So not necessarily doing anything new or different, but doing those things better and better, right? And I wanted to also add that throughout 2020, when I was still side hustling, like, yes, I did do some things for fun here and there. Like I did launch a paid workshop one time and I did launch a free webinar in like November, 2021. And honestly, like I did those things on a whim. It was purely for fun. And I'll be honest, like they didn't yield as much results in my business. And I honestly didn't really expect it to, especially in hindsight, like I did them because I really had this like itch. I wanted to scratch, so I scratched it. And I know that if I really wanted those things to yield results more consistently or more, then I actually have to keep practicing them and repeating them and basically do it again and again and again. But that's just not the priority for me uh, in my business at the moment, right? But rather, it's the impact of my podcast and Instagram content and the impact of my marketing and selling and also the impact of my own mindset and sense of belief in what I was doing by turning up these things up like 10 notches that really resulted in like 10 extra results without having to spend more time on the business or doing more things or doing anything new. And I think whenever someone is like, I I feel like I need to do more things in my business. I think the question that now comes up in my mind is, but why? Like, why do you need to do more things? Like, why do you need more time to do more things for your business? Because a lot of people say they want a simple business. But when I tell them, okay, like it's really simple, just do X, Y, and Z, it's like it's it's like it's too simple for them. And they go buy another course and like 
go for another strategy or like start doing all these fancy things, like start a wait list or whatever for their one-to-one coaching program. Right. And I'm like, okay, so you said you wanted to have more time to work on your business and like do more things, but is that really what you want? Like, is that even aligned to the lifestyle that you want? So those are the questions that I've been thinking a lot about recently, because for myself and for our clients, like we don't want our business to feel like another full-time job, right? Like we legit rather be living our best life and still be allocating sufficient and ample time to work hard on the business, but not in a way that feels like it's another job that we dread, right? And that's why our clients, like whether they're sasters or they're full-time in their business, we focus on doing the bare minimum number of things in their business, but doing each thing really, really well to sign clients, right? And that's why now when clients first join our program, we actually now do this thing where we map out their bare minimum business plan for the next six months, right? And so here's something more practical I want to offer. Um, And hopefully you might want to consider implementing this in your own business or life. So right now, if you're in a stage of your business where you're still kind of figuring out your own like time management or workflows or energy management and, and mind management, I suggest focusing your content and marketing and selling on only one social media platform. And for most of my clients, they chose, they, they tend to choose either Instagram or LinkedIn just because of the range of mediums that they can like create on these two platforms. And I actually, you know what, fun fact, I actually worked with a client once who found a lot of success on Twitter because uh, her target audience were mostly like academics and professors. So they tend to like congregate on Twitter. But anyway, so the reason why I suggest focusing your time and energy on just one social media platform for now is because like until you start signing more clients, Um, number one, it takes time to build up your muscle to create for more than one platform and to build up that consistency muscle that we all strive for, right? And number two, because it takes time to really hone your voice and your confidence when it comes to communicating your story, your values, your thought leadership, and so on. So give yourself the room to, to practice like the physical act of creating content and to practice your own building of confidence and belief in what you have to say, Right. And then later on, I I definitely do suggest adding in a long form content platform in addition to that social media platform and or repurposing the the content from the, the first social media platform out onto more social media platforms. So that's exactly what I did uh, in my business. Right. So in 2020, um, or it, it was around like October 2020 when I first launched a podcast. Um One of the reasons, you know, now that I look back, I feel like one of the biggest contributors to why the podcast was able to create quite a bit of success in a relatively short span of time, because um, as of right now, it is September 15, and um, it's almost a two-year anniversary of the podcast. Um, I feel like the reason why we're able to create results in quite a quick period of time for the podcast is because I did exactly what I just told you, right? So let me just give you a quick background. So In summer of 2020, I knew that I was about to start my PhD in August 2020, right? So I I also knew that I had to adjust to a totally different schedule and a new mindset because now I'm going to be in a new and unfamiliar setting, learning new things and et cetera. So I knew that I had to be very intentional about how I use my cognitive capacity and how I use my time. So I made a decision. And here's the the key thing I want to note here. I made the decision to work on one skill set for the time being until I'm ready to move on to another skill set. And the specific skills that I chose was Instagram stories. I decided, okay, so right now I really want to practice my ability to create Instagram stories quickly, efficiently, powerfully, and confidently. So since summer 2020, I was like, you know what? Every day I'm going to give myself 20 minutes to do video Instagram stories in the morning before I start my day as a PhD student. And usually that looked like about three minutes of video Instagram stories every day. And then I might repurpose that onto my uh, feed content. And you know what happened? My confidence in my content skyrocketed because I zoned in on that one skill set. I saw my ability as a communicator, as a public speaker, it just shot up because I focused on that one skill set. I also made offers and I talked about my program with just so much more confidence and excitement and belief. And as a result of just practicing that one skill and just committing to that one skill, I realized I actually have so much to say. 
So much so that two months after I decided on that one skill and it, two months, I thought it would take me like four or six months, but it actually ended up being two months because I just practiced that one skill and the results got faster and faster and faster. Two months later, I started the podcast. And that's why the podcast was able to start off on a strong foot because it had that foundation from Instagram to build off of. I had that muscle built up from using Instagram, which I then translated onto the podcast. Right. So as you can see, focusing in on one skill set and getting really good at that one skill, it can really protrude out into like different or like multiple areas of your business. So that's why, especially for those of you who are side hustlers out there, I highly recommend picking one skill set to zone in on and really, really master it and then start seeing the ripple effects from that one skill alone. And of course, start signing clients even as a side hustler. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed that first tip. That was one of my favorite takeaways from my side hustling days. So now let's move on to tip number two. Start becoming known for your unique thought leadership as soon as possible because knowing how to stand out in your space and becoming known for what you bring to the table, it's not just important for marketing and sales, but also for your own sense of identity and belief in what you do. Right, so I'm just going to be really blunt here and cut straight to the point because the more you play around and the more you like spend time looking at what other business coaches that you really admire and like you're looking at what they're doing, you're consuming from other coaches and just trying to see what everyone else is doing or seeing what's working for them, the less likely you are actually going to be building a brand that is going to stand out in your niche or industry. And I know this because I've been there. I, I've had months in the very beginning where I would just be consuming and creeping on so many people and it did not make me feel any better about myself. So when I compare the months where I was like, you know, looking and sounding like everyone else because I was paying so much attention to other people versus like when I really leaned into my own brain and looked at what was already inherent inside of me and what I really believed in, the skills and perspectives that I bring to the table and start building a brand and thought leadership around that while continuing to hold my skills to like gain more awareness and knowledge so that I'm not just staying stagnant, of course, but also just like becoming better at my craft as I continue to work with more people, right? Clients then actually wanted to work with me, right? So let me give you a very specific example here. And I think the first time I really believed I had something to offer my industry it was around quarter one of 2021. And this was soon after I created my first two back-to-back 10K months as a side hustler without launching. And the reason why I brought this word launching up is because a lot of my clients, even back then, they would come to me and they would ask like, Cheryl, how do I plan a launch? Like I see all these business coaches doing launches. So can you help me plan my pre-launch and launch content? And I would just like stare at them and I would think, wait, but I don't even launch, like at least not the the way that launching is defined traditionally, right? So like the the whole like building up um, demand with a pre-launch and then opening the car and then closing the car and then having all these urgency tactics and verbiage, right? Like I didn't do any of that when I created my two back-to-back 10K months, right? And then like when I would go on Instagram, I would legit legitimately see all these big business coaches selling courses and programs specifically on launching right and they would even say like oh you can launch for one-to-one coaching spots which is not what I do whatsoever so then at the time I was thinking why why are people talking about selling one-to-one coaching in such a complicated way right like my clients are already so overwhelmed with life work whatever and now they got to worry about creating the creating this whole launch plan I was like nah like we're not doing that so then I had to reverse engineer what I did and I then identified my approach and what I was really good at, which is soft launching for my own one-to-one coaching program, right? So that's when I started talking about soft launching and I started teaching it. And I even did a whole like uh, entire paid workshop back in, I think it was like April, 2021, because I was like, oh my goodness, people need to stop thinking they have to do a big splashy, flashy launch for their one-to-one coaching program, right? And I think we sold like, I think it was either 12 or 13 spots for that workshop, But that's not the most interesting thing because for me, what was the most interesting thing out of the whole entire experience here was that all of a sudden I was known as the soft launch queen. Like literally, like 
I had people saying like, Cheryl, you are the queen of soft launching. And then starting then on my application forms to work with me and on sales calls, like people would actually write down, like they want to learn soft launching from me. And even to this day in 2022, I have had clients who say, I want to learn soft launching. So like people recognize me with my own unique thought leadership and my own opinions and views about business and marketing. And that blew my mind, right? And I'm quite certain that becoming known for something was a huge reason why my own business results snowballed and got bigger and faster by the end of 2021 as I continued to identify what I really did want to be known for and continue building brand awareness for that uh, and also building demand for my, my coaching program as a result and ultimately being known as a thought leader in the, the coaching space as well. And since then, in addition to teaching my clients about self-launching, I also developed a whole entire process to teach and coach our clients on how to hone in on their unique thought leadership. And actually, for a lot of our clients, like on their testimonial forms, they would literally write thought leadership as a huge reason why they were able to create results from our coaching together and why they were signing clients, right? And this, this uh, applied to both clients who were starting their businesses from scratch before working together and also those who were really struggling to sign clients for quite a number of months before they started working with me. And since working with me and leaning in and like honing in on their unique thought leadership, they've been able to create results that they wanted, right? So this thought leadership thing, it is a game changer. I'm just saying, okay? And I also just want to add that the goal when I work with my clients to hone in on their unique thought leadership, the goal was not to copy and paste my own content strategy and pluck it into like my client's business. But instead, like our clients are really encouraged to explore, right? Like literally use their own brain. Like, for example, like we might look at where they disagree with other people, including where they disagree with me, right? Like, what do they disagree with other coaches on, including their own coach, aka Cheryl Lau, right? So like, if you want a sneak peek of um some of our clients, like what they've created and what they're they're known for, what they stand for, I would suggest checking out episode um, 66 and 68, because that is where we interviewed two past clients where they talked about what they bring to the table. And they did share a bit more about how our work together helped bring their thought leadership to life. And the reason why tip number two, so thought leadership is so important and why I believe in it so much is because, well, first, like I'd rather you be working and coaching with clients like ASAP, right? But also number two, this helps you really build a name and reputation for yourself in the long term, right? Because as side hustlers, like I get that your preference is not to like add more to your to-do list. So how can you really maximize like every piece of content or marketing that you do lay down, right? So to do this, please start thinking about your unique thought leadership and start building your content and marketing or soft launch planning or whatever you name it, like around your unique thought leadership and start attracting clients who do recognize and understand what's your unique take on your industry and how you can help your clients solve their problems. So stop doing what others are doing. Stop creeping other people, stop choosing a niche based on what you think is trending or will make you money. Stop posting sentences or content that utilizes like certain trends or certain language because you think that's what's going to get you the most engagement. But instead, please lean into what you're confident in and what you genuinely believe in and what you really want to be known for, right? Like your confidence in your own thought leadership rather than like a piece of copy or a particular call to action or even your niche, like it's your confidence in your thought leadership. Like that is what's going to drive results in your business. Your belief and confidence in what you have to say and how you can help, like you'd be surprised how much this really matters way more than you would think, right? And hey, that's why they say your thoughts create your results, right? Okay, so a practical tip I do want to offer here is that, so some of you might right now be thinking, okay, but I haven't been in business for that long and I haven't worked with many clients yet. So I'm not sure what my thought leadership is. Well, first, I would love to invite you to join me inside one's been coaching because I've coached a lot of clients who are in that exact position. But second, right now, if believing that you do have unique thought leadership, if it feels like it's too much of a stretch in terms of like belief right now, then I encourage you to just focus on helping people. Just create content that helps people and also help people through your coaching, right? So help people through your content and through your coaching. Like I don't care if it's for free or through your paid container, just help people because eventually 
when you are helping people, then being able to clearly identify and hone in on your unique dollarship will become much more natural and obvious and clear. But right now, if it feels like too much of a stretch, just go and help people, right? You can never lose. You can never miss out. You can never feel like, like you can never, you can never lose, like, by just helping people, right? By focusing on helping people, I should say, because helping people is exactly how we as entrepreneurs and coaches get paid, right? So please lead with that intention right now. And there is actually, in my opinion, um, a strategy component to that, right? Because in addition to like the mindset of thinking about how can I help someone, right? Like when it comes to your own content and marketing, you could look at it from the, the angle of what does my ideal client need to know about my offer right now? right? Like what are those teeny tiny questions that they might have about my offer? And like, maybe they're pretty much like just on the fence about working with me, but they're simply not sure about like that one thing. So what would it be? And how can I help them by addressing that, con- like that, that thought or like that concern in my content or like what sort of awareness or understanding about their own situation or problem would be helpful for my people to have right now? How can I create content right now that helps them have that awareness of why their situation is happening? So it's like, oh, no wonder this problem is happening. Because here's the thing, like oftentimes when we have awareness of why a problem is even happening, that can be so profound, right? And once we have the awareness of why something is going on, then we have much more cognitive and emotional capacity to then take action and solve that problem, right? So like all of those like content and marketing ideas, like they all can stem from the mindset of wanting to help your people, right? So hope that makes sense. And I hope that helps. All right. So now let's move on to the third and final tip for today. All right. Tip number three, do not lower your goals or standards of your potential or capacity to be an entrepreneur just because you're a side hustler, because side hustlers can make just as much money and impact as someone who is full-time in their business. Okay. So one thing that I personally grappled with as an entrepreneur is feeling like because I'm a side hustler, my business is not as legit as those who are running it full time uh, as their main source of income or career. And when I asked myself why that was such a prominent belief for me at one point, honestly, I think it's because so many coaches and like established entrepreneurs, they're like, you've got to take your business seriously and not treat it like a hobby or passion project or side hustle. And I'm like, oh my God. And then like, whenever like I would speak to people who are not entrepreneurs or business owners, and when they would ask me about like, like what I'm doing, right. They would usually ask me about my job or PhD and not really about my business. Right. But, or, or, or if they did ask about my business, it would be like, oh, so are you like an influencer now? Right. So like the energy I kind of picked up from people around me, whether it's online or offline, it's like my side hustle, it just wasn't as legit as other people's main career or like a traditional career, right? And I actually want to share something that actually happened really recently, even after I became a full-time entrepreneur. So this year in 2022, I noticed something super interesting that was happening whenever I was with my husband's friends and they would ask me like, oh, what are you doing now that you're in Singapore? And I noticed my response would be very different from how I would introduce myself to someone who I might've met organically through my own network, especially someone who I met through my own business and they were a fellow entrepreneur, right? Because here in front of my husband's friends, because most, most of them are actually in a traditional career, I would just default to saying something like, oh, right now I'm just doing my online business full-time because like I recently had to quit my PhD to move here to Singapore, right? But whereas if I was talking to a fellow business owner, I would talk about my business in a much more convicted way. Like this is my career and I'm so proud of it, right? And when I noticed that, when I just had the awareness of, I was talking about my business in such a condescending way, I honestly cried. Like I honestly choked up because I was just so sad that I was talking about my, my business, my, my quote unquote cute little side hustle that changed my life in such a way. Right. Because for me to talk about my business in such a belittling way, just because I was worried about what these non-entrepreneurs were thinking, it, it really, it really made me really sad because the truth is I am so proud to be a coach. Coaching changed my life and I'm able to help 
so many people because I am a coach, right? So anyways, that can be a whole entire conversation on its own. I'm, I'm going to get really emotional if I keep talking about it. I feel like you can hear my voice choking up there. But anyways, all that to say, being a full-time entrepreneur, it doesn't mean shit, right? Like your identity as an entrepreneur and even as a whole person, it is not based on whether you're full-time in your business or not, right? Who you are, your sense of self, like all of that has nothing to do with whether your, your business is your main source of your income, right? Or what your job title is. You are an entrepreneur because you decide that is who you are first and foremost. And that belief might not happen overnight, right? Like, and that's the thing, like, I never tell my clients to just, oh, believe it, right? But rather I understand that your sense of identity as a coach, as an entrepreneur, like it takes time and repetition. And it also takes practice of creating evidence to really ingrain that into your brain, right? Just, but, but for right now, just for the purpose of this conversation, I just want to emphasize that there is no need to play down your business just because you are a side hustler. And since we are on that note, I also just want to say that the opposite holds true as well. So just because someone has a business does not make them more legit than someone who doesn't have a business, right? And vice versa, right? Like just because someone is more, they feel so happy and successful in their own career, doesn't mean that that makes them more worthy than someone who is struggling to grow their business right now, or just like any other scenario on the spectrum of possible scenarios, right? Like no one scenario is better than the other, but you've got to decide that your work matters, right? Like you've got to define success and define your identity for yourself. So all that to say, please stop taking up other people's definition of success or definition of what a legit entrepreneur is and define it for yourself and recognize that what you're doing, even as a side hustler, it matters, right? So now as we are moving to the end of the episode, and now you might be moving onwards with your day or your week, I really need you to remember that your work, what you do, it has value, it has relevance, and it can help someone. That's all I need you to remember. Like, even if you don't believe it 100%, you can still operate out of like 5% confidence or belief in what I just said, right? Like, you don't need to be 100% confident to create results and to be successful. Just a tiny, tiny little bit of confidence can get you started, right? And so if you need a little bit of guidance to get started or what to focus in on, let's loop back to the first two points of the episode here. So number one, pick one or two areas of your business to really work on mastering and turn up the quality and energy of those skill sets rather than the number of things that you're doing or the number of hours you clock in. And number two, give yourself some time and space to think about what it is that you want to be known for and what is your own unique thought leadership? What are your own opinions? What are your personal experiences and stories that let you to develop those opinions and ideas and perspectives, right? Like start with everything that you already got inside you and start there first and use that to create something that can help people. And that includes both free content and your paid offer. Because eventually when these basics are unlocked, then the more advanced strategies like doing a group program or launching a podcast, it's going to be so much easier and it's going to make a lot more sense for your business because I really believe that you are very capable of creating a beautiful, highly impactful business even as a psychiatrist. I really believe that all of us have the potential to be a successful entrepreneur if we are leading with the intention of wanting to create amazingness and helping others, right? And if you're listening to this podcast, I'm very confident that you are also someone who wants to create amazing things and you do have a deep desire to help others through your work. And that is why I really mean it when I say I believe that all of us here have what it takes to create an impactful and profitable business. So with that, that are those are the three things I wanted to touch on for today. I, um, I really hope that those different uh, topics and tips were helpful to you in some way. And it really gave you something to think about and maybe even something that that you want to apply or implement in your own business. So yeah, um, side hustle life, ride or die. (laughs) Some of you are probably cringing at this episode right now thinking like, oh my God, this girl's crazy. But I really believe it. Like side hustle life, ride or die. Like I love being a side hustler. It has really changed my life. It has really changed my sense of identity. And I, I would not be who I am or where I am today without being a side hustler first and foremost. So yes, to those of you who are listening to this right now who are side hustler, congratulations. 
I'm so proud of you. You're on one of the best paths ever. And I cannot wait to see what's next for you and for all of us. Sounds good? Awesome. Let's get to work.